The Trump supporter who stole Ashley Biden's diary and sold it to a right-wing group to make money and to try to cost Joe Biden the 2020 election is now headed to federal prison. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, aka the Florida Lawman here on the Midas Touch Network. Thank you for all your likes and your comments. Keep them coming. And as far as the woman who stole Ashley Biden's diary, you remember that? Let's meet Amy Harris. She's a Florida woman. Yeah. Again, they all seem to be from Florida, right? It's frustrating. She rented a room at a house in Delray Beach, which is not too far from here, that Ashley Biden had rented, had lived in for some time. And then when Ashley Biden, before the 2020 election, moved up to Philadelphia temporarily, Ashley Biden left her stuff in this home. And some of the stuff included her personal diary. So what did Amy Harris do? She stole it. She called a friend named Robert Curlander, and they took Ashley Biden's diary and other things, and they looked around to sell it. And they did sell the diary to Project Veritas. You remember Project Veritas? That's that right-wing so-called journalist, the gotcha journalism, James O'Keefe, who ran it until he was forced out. And now they're in disarray, this group. But at the time, they were a prominent right-wing outlet that did hidden cameras. And they love stuff like this. And they paid $40,000 to the two of them for this diary. And the thinking for Miss Harris was not only that they'd make money, but that they would harm Joe Biden. Because after all, the federal prosecutors in the brief said that. They said that... Harris told Curlander that she wanted to harm Joe Biden's campaign before the 2020 election. They saw what was happening with Hunter Biden's laptop, and they wanted this to be laptop 2.0. So that was their aim. Now, flash forward to August 25th, 2022, and Harris and Curlander pled guilty and faced a maximum of five years in prison. Yeah, they they were charged. So what happened was they went to Project Veritas, Project Veritas, went to the Biden campaign, and then the Biden uh, lawyers said, hey, uh, this is extortion, you can't be doing this, and that's private material that was stolen. So they went to the authorities, and the authorities then put the hammer down on Amy Harris and Robert Curlander. They were arrested and faced real prison time. So what happened was... Curlander agreed to cooperate and was scheduled to be sentenced on April 12th. Well, all of a sudden, his sentencing deadline was pushed way back, six months back. Why is that? Well, because Curlander has agreed to cooperate. And that must be some serious cooperation when the feds are saying, yeah, come back in six months. Let's see what you give us and where it could lead. And Amy Harris, well, she took a different approach. Instead of cooperating, she just lied to the court, said that, hey, she couldn't make it. She didn't show up. She she was busy. One time during a hearing, she called from an emergency room. Yeah. Instead of showing up in court where she was supposed to, she called from an emergency room saying, I, I can't show up. And then eventually she had sentencing on March 27th. And on March 27th, she was a no-show again. And the judge, federal judge, said, this is enough. I'm going to send federal marshals out to grab you unless you now produce all this financial documentation and other paperwork, and then you have to appear at the next hearing. So the federal judge did give her a bit of deference because she could have sent out the marshals right away, but she gave her yet another chance, uh, but made her jump through a bunch of hoops, and she did finally show up in court. So she did, and she got a month in federal prison. Now, prosecutors had originally asked for up to six months of house arrest. And even though it's a maximum of five years in prison, as someone who has not much of a criminal background, she would not get that maximum anywhere close to it. But after she pulled those shenanigans, it was more likely she was going to have to serve some time. And perhaps if she had just cooperated like Curlander, or at least showed up to her hearings, she would have walked with probation. Because after all, that's essentially what the prosecutors asked for. Not a day in prison. But after she pulled these shenanigans, yeah, she talked her way into a month in prison. And here's what the judge said about the case. 
The conduct of the woman, Amy Harris, quote, was despicable and consequently very serious, end quote. Judge Laura Taylor Swain of Federal District Court for the Southern District of New York said before handing down a punishment. Ms. Harris, 41, tested the patience of prosecutors and the judge overseeing the case, missing repeated sentencing dates and jeopardizing what otherwise appeared to be a likely path to probation. In August 2022, she pleaded guilty to conspiring to transport the stolen diary to New York, where she met with employees of the group Project Veritas and sold it for $40,000 just weeks before the election. The judge also sentenced her to three years probation, along with three months of home confinement in order to pay back the money she earned from the sale. Initially, federal prosecutors had recommended Ms. Harris face up to six months of home confinement and three years of supervised release, while her lawyers had requested probation, but her sentencing was pushed back repeatedly a dozen times, in part because Ms. Harris claimed she had child care issues or was sick. You're not supposed to push back your sentencing because you don't feel like showing up or you have a million excuses. You can get picked up by marshals at any time. Unfortunately, uh, for the cause of accountability, she was allowed to have repeated postponements until the judge finally said, this is your last one. And then she showed up and she got a month in incarceration. Prosecutors, exasperated, asked the judge this month to impose a sentence of four to 10 months in prison, saying Ms. Harris had, quote, repeatedly and consistently engaged in tactics to improperly delay this proceeding, end quote. They accused her of misrepresenting the nature of her child care, failing to get an identification card so she could travel to New York, and flouting the court's rules. So I know that a lot of us will say that's not good enough. She should have received more. But remember, this crime is relatively a low-level one. It's punishable by up to five years in prison, but as some without a lengthy rap sheet, she was not going to get anywhere near that. In fact, because of her shenanigans, she did get incarceration. Because of her shenanigans, she's going to be wearing an orange jumpsuit and a pair of steel bracelets for a month, followed by three months of home confinement after that. Plus, she has to pay it back for a woman who doesn't have much money. And she's going to have three years of probation. So if she steps out of line once in the next three years, she's going to go back to prison. So there is some accountability there. And think of it this way. And here's a woman who thought she was getting a payday, and instead she got arrested. She had to pay for lawyer's fees, and she's now a convicted felon, and that has real implications for her future job prospects. She's going to lose her civil rights, this ability to vote, at least in the near term. And she will always have that scarlet letter on her chest. So I don't think it was worth it for her. And then Project Veritas also faced real accountability. Project Veritas is a shell of its former self. James O'Keefe, the head guy there, was forced out because of financial discrepancies. The person who took his place, a woman who came into the organization, couldn't believe what a financial mess it was, and she left. And so they're still around, but it's not what it used to be. This was a group that was very prominent in right-wing circles, and now they're just trying to survive. But I understand. It can be frustrating when you see these MAGA folks seem to get away with it. But 2024 still is the year of accountability. You're seeing more and more of insurrectionists, uh, lawyers who are involved with it. You see defendants like Ms. Harris actually having to serve some time, actually having to face the music. And this matter is not over yet. Remember Robert Curlander. He is still cooperating with authorities. As the New York Times article says, Mr. Curlander, 60, who also pleaded guilty and has cooperated with the Justice Department's investigation into the theft, is scheduled to be sentenced later this year. On Friday, prosecutors asked for a six-month delay. Mr. Curlander was previously convicted of fraud in a federal court in Florida. He also faces prison time, but unlike Ms. Harris, decided to cooperate with prosecutors, and you can see why. Curlander has a rap sheet. When you're previously convicted of fraud, you're more likely to get real incarceration in the federal system than someone like Ms. Harris, who didn't have any major crimes in her past. She did pick up a DUI after she was arrested for this crime, but Curland was facing real time, and so he turned state's evidence. He is cooperating in a big way. That's why they postponed the sentencing for six months, and the more he gives up, the less time he will have to do. So this matter continues. There is still more accountability in 2024. So, stay tuned. 
If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, aka The Florida Lawman. And also, check out our new channel, True Crime MTN, where we tackle the true crime cases that aren't covered here at the Midas Touch Network. I think you'll like it over there. Check it out. And I'll see you next time. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.